Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the news of Ashiroq TV. Our headlines are... Rwanda calls for removing sanctions in Sudan and Zimbabwe. The Sudan Revolutionary Front renewed its commitment to give the sit-in breakup issue top priority. Federal Ministry of Health has declared 189 new cases of coronavirus. Rwandan President Kagame called for the lifting of sanctions against Zimbabwe and Sudan as they struggle to cope with the economic and social impact of the coronavirus pandemic. The two nations are still facing U.S. prescriptions and complicating attempts to get debt relief that countries on the continent are seeking. Speaking at the summit of the Organization of African, Caribbean and Pacific States, Kagame urged the nations to work to harmonize and amplify our voices on the continued need for our countries to have adequate fiscal space to respond effectively. The United Nations Security Council is expected in the coming hours to adopt a resolution that would establish a United Nations Integrated Transition Assistance Mission in Sudan, UNITAMS, to support the government in Khartoum during the transitional period. The resolutions on UNITAMS and UNAMID will be adopted in a video conference meeting of the Security Council members to be held at 9.45 a.m. New York time on the 4th of June 2020. Sudanese Prime Minister Abdullah Hamdok came under fire calling on the UN to establish a new mission in Sudan with an expanded role. Hamdok insisted, however, that the mission does not include uniformed forces and will not interfere in his government's policies, but will provide the needed support to implement its goals and objectives. The governor of central Darfur state, Suleiman al Amin, confirmed the control of the armed forces and the rapid support forces in the area of Khartoum after the attack by defectors from the SLA movement in clear violation of the ceasefire declared by the transitional government as a goodwill initiative to complete the peace process. The armed forces were able to restore the areas that the movement was accustomed to in a short time, while the commander of the rapid support forces affirmed the central Darfur sector, the control of the forces in the area of Khartoum, and the military focal points around them and their adherence to the ceasefire. Cabinet Affairs Minister Ambassador Amar Maniz has pointed out that the coming period requests more mobilization of efforts to realize peace and stability. This came when the minister met on Thursday the newly appointed Defense Minister, Major General Yassin Ibrahim, in the presence of the Cabinet Secretary General Osman Hussein. The meeting discussed the programs and the priorities of the transitional period, where the Defense Minister expressed readiness to work with the Cabinet staff to realize the goals of the constitutional document. The Shuhada Gardens and the Republican Palace in Khartoum witnessed on Thursday a celebration to mark the martyrs of the sit-in who sacrificed their lives for the homeland. A number of members of the Sovereignty Council, community figures, members of the Supreme Committee for Health Emergencies and the families of the martyrs participated in the event. The Sovereign Council member Aisha Musa, who addressed the event, described the sit-in massacre as sad memory in the life of the Sudanese people, adding that the people celebrated the martyrs with peace music the least we can do. The Sudan Revolutionary Front renewed its commitment to give the sit-in breakup issue top priority. The Front said in a statement issued on Wednesday marking the first anniversary of the breaking up of the sit-in before the Army General Command that justice is a basic factor in building the new Sudan, calling on the independent investigation in crime of breaking up the sit-in to speed up its work and announce the results. The RF affirms to the Sudanese people that it will not betray the blood of the martyrs, the statement said. Senior official at the Sudan Federal Ministry of Health has declared 189 new cases of the novel coronavirus, rising the overall toll to 5,499. Also seven deaths has been reported as five in Khartoum, the capital city of Sudan, and two in other states. In related developments, Khartoum State has recorded 137, Jazeera 20, Ghadarif 9, White Nile 6, Sinar 3, Blue Nile 3, River Nile 2, East Darfur 2, North Kordofan 1 and West Kordofan 1 cases of COVID-19. 
The Sovereign Council member, the Deputy Head of the Higher Committee for Health Emergencies, Professor Sadiq Taur, has commanded the great role being played by the visiting Chinese medical delegation to provide medical services and assist Sudan to curb COVID-19. Taur told the Chinese delegation in a meeting held at the Republican Palace on Thursday that the visit affirms the strong relations between Beijing and Khartoum, adding that China's success over COVID-19 will help Sudan to benefit from its experience in this connection. We have con conducted in-depth exchanges on how to strengthen our cooperation in disease control and public health. We also reach a consensus in the field of cooperation in public health. As we all know, China and Sudan are good friends, good partners, and good brothers through good and bad times. We always have supported and helped each other over the years. In the face of unprecedented threat posed by COVID-19, we have once again stood shoulder to shoulder to fight against the virus. As Sudan is facing increasing grief and difficult situation, the Chinese government dispatched medical expert team to visit Sudan, help fight against the virus. This is very important cooperation between our two countries. The Deputy Chief of Staff, Manoor Osman, has underlined that the only weapon for fighting the COVID-19 is the commitment of the citizens to the precautionary measures and staying at home. General Munawar said in the press conference held Wednesday by the Higher Committee for Health Emergencies at the Sudan News Agency that if we implemented the precautionary measures and the total lockdown by ourselves and without checkpoints, we would announce Sudan free of COVID-19 in the end of the two-week period. Reminding headlines. Rwanda calls for removing sanctions in Sudan and Zimbabwe. The Sudan Revolutionary Front renewed its commitment to give the sit-in breakup issue top priority. Federal Ministry of Health has declared 189 new cases of coronavirus. That was everything for tonight. Thank you for following and see you next time.